Well, the eagle-eyed amongst you will notice that um, K-Dog has vacated his seat and we've been joined again by Shannon Taylor, head coach of Oxford City Stars. Welcome, Shannon. Thanks for coming out. No, thank you for having me. It's Sorry been... for the downgrade. <laughs> it's, uh, it's good to co- you, for you to come back in. You, we had you in earlier in the season when you took over the, the role of head coach. How, how do you think your um, tenure has gone in that um, short period to the end of the season? Um, yeah, it's been exhilarating. It's been a learning experience. It's been really, really good. Um, there's been some horrible moments. There's been some fantastic moments. But um, all in all, from my own personal point of view, very, very enjoyable. Um, from the club's point of view, I think if we, if you look back at the course of this season, I think it would be very fair to say that it wasn't a success. You know, I think. There was much promise and I think we went our way of proving that what you have on paper doesn't necessarily mean that you have a good result on the pitch or on the ice, as it were. So, um, but yeah, I've, I've really, really enjoyed the, the last however many weeks, eight, 12 weeks, I think it's been. So, yeah, it's been, been really enjoyable. Good stuff. Um, <coughs> obviously, the results were as you wanted, but, you know, from the team performances and um, the, the squad that may go into um, September of this year for the new season, looking forward to, and obviously going to make some changes, some hard changes, and, and but looking ahead, what's that look like for Oxford City Stars at the moment? Um, yeah, so, no, it's fair to say the results weren't always as we would have liked, but given you know where we, where we came in from, it wasn't unexpected. We, we saw lots of really positive change, actually, throughout the course of, of my tenure, so you know, we were trying to change the playing style. So, um, you know, myself and, and Simon, the previous coach, have slightly different ways of doing things. Um, that's not to say I'm right and he's wrong. It's just that we, we do things in a different way. Um, we, we saw the, impro- uh, the the performances improve a lot. We saw a different way of playing. We saw the players grasp that and do a brilliant job. It's just, you know, unfortunately, we, we probably didn't have the right personnel at times to, to finish the job that we, we wanted. But, um, you know, I can't fault the effort and the commitment of the guys that were there. They were fantastic from the moment I took over. But, y- yeah, you're absolutely right. There will be changes. You know, when, when we took over, I think we quite publicly said that we were going through a rebuild structure. So, you know, that, that means that there will be changes, naturally. Obviously, I was one of those. So um, we're looking to do things in a very different way come September. Obviously, right now is... Um, really the more stressful time for me. So the, the season itself is relatively easy. It's either good or it's bad, but you can only do what you can do. But right now it's kind of that um, chaos of everybody trying to sign everybody. It's trying to hold on to the players you want to hold on to and bring in the players that you want to bring. And it's it's a relatively shallow pool of players. You know, we're not looking to just bring in anybody. We're looking to bring in the right people. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's an interesting few months ahead. I have to keep reminding myself that we're only at the 10th, 11th of April today. Um, the season doesn't start till September, so I, I don't need to panic just yet. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I also don't want to spend all summer on the phone to different players. I want to get things sorted out as quickly as we can do. So, yeah, it's a, a fairly chaotic time at the moment. In, in some of the things you do, obviously been to, I've only been to a couple of games, and it's really hard because it's new sport to me to go and, and watch and, and, and seeing how things were going. Some of the things that you were implementing in your training, do, could you see the, that sort of glimmer of some really good stuff going forward? Is that fair to say? A hundred percent, yes. So, um, you know, I like to play a, a very attacking style of hockey. Um, and we saw that on a number of different occasions. So we, we saw some brilliant, brilliant performances. We saw some horrible performances as well. <laughs> but, um, you know, we, we come up against some good teams that were well established and they, you know, went on and did good things in the, in the league and in the playoffs. So, um, but yeah, we, we saw some brilliant stuff coming through. We saw some players develop in, in brilliant ways. It was really nice to see. And as a coach, and it was you know, my first time in that type of position, seeing your players develop is second to none in terms of enjoyment and we saw some really good performances yes we saw some things come from the training ground or training pitch if you will onto the uh, onto the games and some of those things were, were brilliant to see and you know unfortunately we had some really competitive games but you know we were we were slightly light on bodies for, for various different reasons so, some injury some suspension some just general availability 
Um, so we, we had some really competitive games for 30, 40 minutes of games and just unfortunately ran out of legs towards the end. So, you know, they were competitive up until the point where we were just knackered. So, yeah, but which was nice to see because we, you know, I don't think we were in that position previously. So it was good. Yeah, but in fact, the, the two games I saw, Stratham Royals obviously went on to, to win the league, didn't they? And Chelsea yeah. and Chieftains won the playoffs. Uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, yeah, playoffs, playoffs. correct, yeah. Um, so, um, you know, the two I saw, two decent sides with, you know, depth of squad. So the rotation of the stubs, you know, massive, where you perhaps you didn't have quite the, the mass of personnel to do that. Yeah, and you look, Stratham are... Uh, League winners, multiple league winners. I think they're probably three, maybe even more times on the bounce where they've won the league. So, you know, they're a hugely successful team. They're well coached. They've got a good depth of player within the team. Um, Chelmsford, the same. They, they've probably underperformed over previous years. They had a new coach go in this year, Cliff, who's done a remarkable job, actually, taking them from fifth in the table to second in the table. Um, and they've just gone on to win the, win the playoffs. And I think over the course of the, the four games they played, so the two against us, the semi-final and the final, I think they scored something close to 40-odd goals. So, you know, on an average of 10 goals a game is is pr- pretty handy. So, you know, they, they've done incredibly well. But, um, you know, it, it, it's difficult when we go into a game with two lines of players and they've got four lines of players. Yeah, and great. not only have they got four lines of players, they've got four quality lines of players. And that's not to say that the two we have weren't quality. It's just it takes its toll when you're going out over and over again against those sort of players. So I, I, I stand by it. I was incredibly proud of my players and their performances. You know, whilst the results wouldn't have necessarily been where we'd like, the um, the boys gave everything. Uh, and they continued to turn up week in, week out under incredibly difficult circumstances. So, yeah, I was very proud. I, I was going to say that because it is a commitment. It? It's Saturday <coughs> and Sunday. You know, and yeah, the squad may change between the two two days. I know, but you know, it's still a commitment, and it, it's quite tough, isn't it? It's, it's sixty minutes of full on. Yeah, it really is. Yeah, so um, you know, none of us in uh, in the ice hockey world are football millionaires. Unfortunately, we all got quite good at a sport that we didn't make a huge amount of money on. So, <laughs> you know, maybe uh, my advice to the young kids today is pick a sport where you can make millions and millions. But <laughs> You know, hockey's a brilliant, brilliant sport. It really is. But no, it's in- incredibly tough. It's a challenging sport. You know, it's physical. You know, that at its worst, you could have somebody trying to punch you in the face. At its best, they're still trying to take you out and check you and, and hurt you at times. So, um, you know, and if you're doing that for 60 minutes on the Saturday and then coming back in and doing the same thing again on the Sunday, it's, um, it, it takes its toll. So, you know, and... Like I say, these guys have got to go to work on the Friday. They, you know, some of those have manual jobs themselves as well, and then they have to get up for work on mon- Monday morning. Yeah. So it's um, it's an absolute testament to those guys that show up week in week out. I've I've been there and done it. I understand how difficult it is. So um, yeah, I as a as a coach now will never chastise anybody for being a little bit tired. You know, they all um, they all have difficult difficult circumstances to get through at the best of times. They all do get drained after a game, I have to say, uh, of watching that. I do like the way you dry the gloves in between the periods. That's that's quite a, that's quite a machine. Yeah, yeah it's uh, <laughs> it's a well built be- well built piece of kit. It's so uh, well it's it's a funny one because not every club necessarily has it. So uh, it was something kind of as you as you go up through the leagues, it uh, you want your gloves dried. <laughs> I was never one for it, if I'm being totally honest. So I remember I used to. I used to play with wet gloves almost all the time until somebody said, mate, you really need to try and dry your gloves. So, yeah, I gave it a go once. I've never gone back since. It's nice just to have a nice nice warm pair of gloves to put on in between the periods. So. I should explain. It's, it's sort of a, it's, it's a, it's a downpipe from a guttering uh, yeah. all put together with a couple of hair dryers in each end with poles coming up. <laughs> the gloves are on there, just yeah. drying out. Just drying out. But you'll, you'll see skates on there, you'll see <laughs> gloves on there, you've seen the occasional helmet on there as well. I must admit, I got into the wrong position. I was right above it. The, the, the smell coming off it is quite right, but I have to say. I mean, it is quite entertaining, I, I must yeah, admit. I would avoid that if you can. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I've, I've sampled that now, so I don't <laughs> need to again. Um, brilliant. Uh, I, what was coming on to, obviously, um, proud moment for you. Your, your son back in... Uh, became 16 in, in um, January, played his first game, made his debut at the age of 16. Mm-hmm. Um, proud moment for a parent, but what was that like from a parental point of view, but also from a coach point of view? 
different. Um, yeah, as a, as a parent, unbelievably proud, of course. Um, you know, Ethan started playing hockey when he was five years old, four, four five years old. Um, playing with Swindon Juniors, they've got a phenomenal programme in Swindon. Um, and they've done brilliant things with him. You know, I didn't actually coach him, so I, I, ted, I wanted to stay away. I've been very fortunate that he's been coached by people that I know and trust um, throughout the course of his junior career. So I've just let them get on with it, to be honest. I, I didn't want to be that kind of pushy parent. Um, you know, we've all seen the football dads at the sidelines. I, I didn't want to be that. Um, I think it's probably fair to say at times I probably was, but uh, I, I tried to avoid it as much as I possibly could do. Um, but yeah, it was it was fantastic to see, and you know, as a parent, you, you know, I knew what he was capable of. You know, he had been training with the team for for a fair fair while, so long before I ever took over as a coach, he had been training with the team because you know he's a good good player. So you know, as a, as as Simon, the previous coach, would rightly do, he was looking at an eye to the future. So um, had him train him. We knew he was capable. We knew he could handle the physicality of it because, you know, we don't take practice lightly. Yeah. You know, everybody, you know, pitches in. So to put him into those games, it was, I wouldn't say nerve-wracking because I knew what he was capable of, but it was, um, you know, it was certainly interesting. But, you know, I, I, I can't lie. I feel for him because he certainly gets a harder time than most because I obviously probably give him a little bit more abuse and pick on him more than I would do some of the other players because uh, I need to make an example of him at times. But... You know, yeah, I'm unbelievably proud. He's done incredibly well and, you know, he's proved that he's there on merit. He's justified his selection. He's, I think, put up two goals, maybe two two assists. So, you know, in a relatively short sample size of games, it's a, it's a pretty good return on, on what he's done. As for a 16-year-old, it's it's a phenomenal return. So He was player of the, the match for your side against the Chelsea. Yeah, yeah. So he was player of the, player of the game for for the Chelmsford game, and he, I, he actually won player of the month for uh, March, which was voted for for the fat by the fans. So, you know, I, I have no uh, no impact or influence over that. So that's people that have come in to watch the games that are seeing for their own eyes that he's, you know, working hard and, and contributing. So you know that was again another another mi- nice moment, you know. And in the interest of complete honesty, he wouldn't have been my vote actually for player of the month. <laughs> I. Uh, and hard dad, hard no, hard dad. And, and I will give uh, I will give my wife and uh, Ethan's mum. <laughs> she uh, she also would have picked a different player than Ethan as well. So, uh, but it doesn't mean it, Ethan. Honestly, if you no, watch it, he doesn't mean. No. It. We, we we like him, but uh, <laughs> as a son, yeah, yeah. he's all he's all right. Yeah, he yeah. could do tidy his room better, yeah, maybe. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, the hockey side of it's fine. Yeah. Stuff. You you mentioned there. You alluded to you know um, different coach coaching Ethan there. Um, what what is the setup there? Obviously, you're head coach. Who have you got underneath you, and and, and what happens around the the Oxford City Stars? If you like? Loads, <laughs> loads. Um, yeah, so I'm I'm very fortunate. I've got a fantastic assistant coach in in Josh. Uh, so Josh Flory, he's been part of the Oxford club forever and a day. Um, I actually had the good fortune of playing with Josh as well in one of my one of my stints with Oxford. So I got to know Josh very well. Um, we don't always agree, which I would argue is brilliant because, yeah. you know, it's not just an echo chamber of what I want to do. We, yeah. we have those ideas to bounce off each other. We, as a club at Oxford, have unbelievable volunteers and they are, they go over and above every, every single week. And I'm sure every club in the country has very similar, but I, I can't tell you how much I cherish the people that we have at the club because they make my life immeasurably better because it's, um, it would be impossible to do it all on my own. And then uh, around that, we have um, a, a development squad in the Oxford Rising Stars, so uh, run by Paul and Russ um, and Daryl as their coach, do a brilliant job. We've got a good working relationship with them as a club to, in terms of what we do in terms of bringing people through the, the systems, which is, which is really nice. Um, I had a meeting with them last week about what we're doing for the upcoming season to make sure that we're all aligned um, in terms of know the players that we're interested in and looking at and how we're going to bounce people up and up and down between the two squads which is which is brilliant and great for for Oxford you know and I think uh, at times I think people have probably accused and looked as an outsider looking in that we're not completely joined up you know I think we want to quash that myth that's couldn't be further from the truth yeah. we've got a, a great working relationship between the two clubs um whilst we are separate we're we're not in any way shape yeah, or form we're very much yeah. very much part of the same Oxford hockey family 
Uh, and then we have a, a junior club, um, so ran by former player Darren Elliott um, as the head coach of the club, doing a brilliant job. You know, the, the club uh, it is probably fair to say over the course of years has probably not been up to the standard it, it should have done. Um, Darren's taken that over and is doing a fantastic job. Um, we're seeing junior players being developed now that obviously from my point of view, I want to get them into the squad. We're, we're probably a little while away from that for the time being. Um, but those things take time. You know, we, we need to see those players develop and, and learn. And, and that's the whole point of having a pathway programme. So you can go from the, the junior club through to the rising stars and into the city stars. Um, it, that being said, if somebody's good enough, as soon as they're good enough, they'll be in my team. Um, I, I'm a firm, firm believer that if you're good enough, you should be given the opportunity to play, regardless of your age. Albeit the rules are slightly tenuous on that. But um, yeah, and I would encourage anybody to take a look at the Oxford Junior Stars Facebook page. If you ever want to get involved, they have a, a Learn to Play programme, which is brilliant. So Darren, again, runs that. Uh, fantastic value for money. There's obviously the ability to get some some kit loaned from the club as well to, to get you on the ice, to give you that initial try. That's brilliant. And it's, um, yeah, it's a sport that, like I say, won't make you a millionaire. I'm sorry. Not unless you get to the very, very pinnacle. But uh, you'll make friends for life. Have a great time get to occasionally punch somebody in the face if they really upset you. So there is the positive. Um, we should all be lying there for that, shouldn't we? To be fair? Yeah. yeah. Take out the work stresses. But um, no, it's, it's, it's a really great sport. And I, I would just actively encourage any anybody that's looking for something to kind of build that discipline, give themselves that regular structure. It's a great fitness activity to, to, to take a look and give it a go because it really is a great sport. You heard it here first, guys. You know, if you're looking to... Get along. Is there a certain night or a, 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 an induction evening or something yep. like that? Yeah, so I hate to be stand corrected on this, but I believe it's a Thursday night for the uh, Learn to Play programme. But please check the Facebook page because I might be do, wrong. Do that, do that. I'm, uh, I'm brilliant, but I'm not all-knowing, unfortunately. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, t take a look at the Oxford uh, Junior Stars Facebook page. The, all the information's there. Uh, the club contacts are there as well, of course. So, um yeah, re reach out to somebody at the club and they'll, they'll of course, advise on how to get there and what to do and when to go. Brilliant. And, and one last thing, really, um, <coughs> before we, we finish off the interview, is the support. The support was phenomenal, wasn't it? We are unbelievably blessed at Oxford to have such a brilliant support base. So we, uh, I think we actually published the numbers earlier in the summer. So we... We've seen an average attendance or pre pre season uh, pre game ticket sales have increased by just over a hundred tickets yeah. per game, which is massive for a, a club like ours. And a, any club in the league would be absolutely over the moon with that, you know. And what's I think most impressive about that is it's not been a great season on the ice at all times. So the fact that we've got a really great off ice product, you know, people get to come down, they can interact with the players. We're we're very engaged in that respect. I think that helps, but from a playing point of view, it's brilliant. You know, there's there's nothing worse than stepping out on the ice and it just being silent and there being no atmosphere. So, you know, the fact that we've got such a fantastic fan base in Oxford means the world. And, yeah, I, I would just encourage as many people as they can to, to get down and watch a game, give it a go. Uh, I think to dispel some of the myths, you can see the puck. You know, you can see it, yeah. you can track yeah. the game, you can see what's going on. Um, I think people are worried that it's sometimes too fast and you'd lose track of it. It's it's a really quick and easy game to pick up and understand. And it's just fast and furious. So you get to enjoy that kind of... You're in the moment. Yeah, exactly. You're actually in the moment. I, I have to say from what I've seen. And I, I, I don't know all the... I, two games, I've not quite sussed out the offside just yet and dropping the puck when they drop the puck and stuff like that but I'm getting there I'm getting there and um, I, I, I really love that there was mascots uh, and, and everything at the last game it was it was a fantastic atmosphere and I must say my daughter and her partner came and, and they said afterwards we're really supporting <laughs> Oxford City Stars they, they were in the moment they were enjoying the sport which I think is is as, as important as actually um, yeah, obviously you want the support, don't you? Of course you do. But um, it's nice to go along and actually be in the moment of, of enjoying what they were watching, which they yeah. really did. So Yeah, I, I think 
you know, I would I would actively encourage them to be Oxford City yeah, Stars absolutely. fans, of yeah. course. Um, <laughs> merchandise and yellow jerseys are available <laughs> yeah. on the on the table, but um, no, uh, you know, as a I, I suppose a custodian of the sport in that respect, you know, if if two more people go away and say I really enjoyed that, that's all I can ask for. You know, I recognise Oxford's quite a cosmopolitan place, so people come to uni and go off and disappear. So, you know, if somebody comes to uni in Oxford, picks up, enjoys watching Oxford great and then they go back home to wherever they go back home to and you know there'll be a local team they can watch there and if that means that they pick up another fan great you know from from our perspective we we want the sport in the UK to grow not just in Oxford but just in the in the whole of the UK and I think um, you know I would actively encourage if you are a, a traveling student or you're coming through you know take take a look at where your local team is and, and pick up a game you know they won't all be as good as Oxford obviously but you know, there are some brilliant clubs out there that, that offer great experiences to go and watch. And, and again, if you, even as an adult, get this burning desire to go and play, that the opportunities are there. There are recreation teams in, in every ice rink in the country for you to, to pick up a, a stick, a pair of gloves and try a pair of skates on and run around and have some fun. So yeah, I, would, I would encourage it wherever you are. Brilliant. Uh, look, Shannon, thanks again for coming in um, at short notice. Um, as well and we wish you all the very best when it comes to to the new season and well done for this season Um, and um, what I'd say to anybody you know Sunday night or or any home game it's normally Sunday generally Sunday Sunday. Um, get get along um, to the Oxpens ice rink because it is a a great evening I have to say and it's not that expensive I can assure you from a sports perspective and the thrill you get from being there is, is worth every penny. I, I will endorse that 100%. Um, so thank you, Shannon, thank you. very much indeed. We wish them all the very best of luck for season 24-25. Um, it should be a cracker.